Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast in partnership with Kidney Care UK, sharing faith, knowledge, hope, and love. Hi, and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. My name is Dee Moore, and I am a kidney warrior. This podcast is dedicated to encourage, educate, and inspire as we explore all aspects of kidney disease, related chronic illnesses, and health. If you have any questions or ideas for topics you would like me to cover, please get in contact with me on social media using the handle Diary of a Kidney Warrior. My guest today from Birmingham, England, is Advanced Practitioner of Kidney Disease, Patsy Moy, BEM. Patsy Moy joins me to discuss 10 signs that you may have kidney disease. Hi, and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. How are you doing today, Auntie Pat? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you? I'm good. I'm really excited about our interview today. Listeners, everybody knows Patsy Moy, Auntie Pat. I have to call Auntie Pat, Auntie Pat, out of respect because she is the auntie of the podcast. We've done several episodes together. For those who haven't heard them yet, please do check out episodes three, four, and five, where we talk about the basics of kidney disease, what kidney disease is, the causes, etc., etc. Episodes 15 and 16, where we look at understanding your renal blood test results. So the numbers and the letters that you see when you get your blood results, Auntie Pat takes us through it so we can understand it and be empowered. And episode 45, where we look at the relationship between hypertension, diabetes, and CKD. So please do check out those previous episodes. You will learn so much, I guarantee you. But also, I couldn't continue without mentioning that since our last interview, you have received your British Empire Medal, your BEM, in recognition of your contribution to chronic kidney disease. And I wanted to say a massive congratulations on behalf of everyone listening. Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast, we salute you. It's absolutely deserved. You're amazing. And I can't think of a better person to receive such recognition. So congratulations. Thank you very much. It was such a big honor to be recognized for something I've done all the time and all my years, something that I have naturally been doing because I totally believe in early detection and early management of chronic kidney disease. And it's nice that somebody recognized it and thought that I was doing a great thing. And thank you very much to whoever it was who nominated me because I haven't got an idea who nominated me. (laughs) Really? Well, that is so, so deserved. And whoever it is, you know who you are. Thank you for nominating Auntie Pat because she really does deserve it. So well done. So without further ado, we're going to talk about 10 signs that you may have kidney disease. Now, these are taken from the kidneycareuk.org website. So there's lots of information resources available on the Kidney Care UK website. So do check out the website. Again, you will learn so much to help you on your CKD journey. And if you don't have CKD, you will learn so much in terms of prevention as well, and also to support any family member or friend that you know that has chronic kidney disease. So yes, please do check out the website. So I'm going to start with the first out of the 10. Number one is blood in your wee. So why would you get blood in your wee if you have kidney disease? Blood shouldn't be found in your urine. If you do a deep stick, you shouldn't have blood in your urine because blood cells are too big to come out through the kidney filters. Now, when we see blood appearing in the urine, we assume that there is something happening in the urinary tract, some erosion happening in the urinary tract, which is causing someone to bleed. That could be infection. Could be a kidney infection, could be bladder infection, could be a prostate infection, or it could be like a tumor, which is in the kidney, in the bladder, in the prostate, which is causing some erosion. The other thing, it could be a disease of the tissues in the kidneys, which is the sometimes IgA nephropathy, you know, when your own immune system is attacking you. 
with IgA, you tend to find some blood in the urine. And sometimes if you have traveled abroad and you were in the tropics and you were walking in water and everything else, you can also pick up a parasite, which can make you bleed as well. But you bleed at the end of your urine flow rather than at the beginning or in the middle. It's actually your blood are trying to squeeze out the bugs, so it bleeds then when it's trying to do that. And that condition is called bilharzia or schistosomiasis hematobium, which affects people who have been on holiday or who have traveled over on holiday or who have migrated elsewhere. And I'm only mentioning that because I've seen it in one of the clinics and just want to make people aware of So many things to consider there because it might sound rare about the parasite, but people are going abroad, they're going camping, this, that and the other. It's not impossible that this can happen. So it's definitely worth knowing. So ultimately, if you see any blood in your urine at all, Mm -hmm. then it's definitely something you need to get checked out. The question I want to add to that is if you're menstruating, how do you know the difference between normal part of your menstrual cycle and blood in the urine or we that you need to be concerned about? We always ask before getting a sample uh, whether somebody's menstruating or not. If they are, we don't take that sample that time. We ask them to come later after their menstrual period so that we can do a dipstick or whatever. And I must say, if we do a dipstick in primary care and somebody has got three positive because you don't always see this blood some of it is what they call occult blood you can't see it with your eyes but it can be picked up on the dipstick if we Uh find that blood positive twice randomly to different clinics we send that person to the urology department to be investigated because blood from the very top of the urinary tract gets altered before it comes out. So it doesn't look red. Right. Yes. So you could have blood in your urine and there's no red colour at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. So people like that, then you know it could be coming from up there in the top of the urinary tract. But then why is it coming? We need to find out then. And the urology people will take them for scans and whatever and then make sure that there's nothing. Because some people just tend to lose a bit of blood for nothing, for no particular reason. There are people who are like that, but not many. So yes, definitely get that checked out. Blood in the urine is a sign that you cannot ignore. Number two, puffy eyes, ankles and feet. Now that's something I can personally relate to because I've experienced all of these as part of my CKD journey. So why do you get puffy eyes, ankles and feet? We get puffy eyes, ankles and feet because the body is trying to stash away some excess water from the vascular system so that you don't have problems. Because if you have too much water in your vascular system, your blood pressure goes up and you are in trouble. So the the body tries to manage itself to try and keep you safe as a person. So what happens is it stashes the water first away in places like around your eyes, which we call the periorbital area, where your skin is loosely attached to the muscle. So it's around the eyes or it could go at the lowest part of you, the ankles, or if you're standing up, your fingers and you start having problems with your rings, they don't fit anymore. And sometimes if you're lying in bed, it can be on the small of your back at the back here. You can find it with swollen as well. The body is trying very hard to stash this water away and prevent you from having problems. Unfortunately, what tends to happen then is if it's too much, then it makes your skin all puffy and it's vulnerable to have breaking down and having precious areas. So we don't want that to happen. The worst scenario is when it's so much that the water comes around your lungs and It restricts your lungs from expanding when you're trying to breathe in. That's when you become breathless because of excess water. Or it can come around your heart. We don't really want to get there because that would be very, very tricky. So it needs to be managed then early and then just make sure that you are safe. Wow. So very serious implications to that affecting the heart and affecting your lungs. So 
puffiness in the eyes, ankles and feet, definitely something to get checked out. Don't ignore it. Number three is Foamy Wee. Now, without trying to advertise any kind of products that are out there, there are products that you can drop into the toilet bowl or stick onto the side of the toilet bowl that when you flush, you get a load of foam on top of the toilet water. So we're not talking about this. And so for anybody flushing the toilet and thinking, oh my gosh, it could actually just be that. So we need to be clear going into it. We're not talking about that and be aware that that actually might be the reason. But if we get actual foam in our urine, in our wee, why does that happen? Foamy urine happens when your kidneys are letting out too much protein from the kidneys. Protein, again, like blood, is too big to come through the kidneys. And excess loss of protein will damage the kidneys faster. And excess loss of protein will also put the person at risk of having cardiac heart problems. And so we don't want that to happen. So if you are suspecting that you have protein in your urine, it actually bubbles on top of the urine. Like D, you said, it could be the whatever product you're putting in your toilet to keep it nice and fresh. What you can do if you are not sure is having a clear container, get a sample of urine. If you shake it, you see a lot of bubbles on top of it. If it's like that, it means you're losing a lot of protein. If you are diabetic, it could be the diabetes is starting to affect your kidneys. And that can be managed very easily and be kept under control. If you are not, and you sort of think that is the time to go and say to your GP, I think I'm, I've got bubbly urine. What is it? And prevent things before they get worse. So something very simple can mm-hmm. be actually telling you something really serious. So yes. again. Foamy wee, if you see it, get it checked out. Number four, tiredness and brain fog. Now, this might be the one that people might ignore the most because let's face it, if you're working, you know, you've got children, you're working long hours, you're taking care of little ones or you've got a baby or whatever reason, or you're feeling ill or run down or you might be anemic. There's so many reasons that you might be feeling tired. You'd get brain fog because you're feeling tired. So this might be the one that people would definitely not associate with having kidney disease because let's face it, there's loads of reasons why you feel tired. So why do you get tiredness and brain fog if you have kidney disease? Tiredness is associated with having too much waste products which the kidneys get rid of in your body system. Normally, the kidneys are the refuse collectors of your body. They will get rid of excess of what we eat. They get rid of excess. The waste of what we drink, they get rid of that. Some of it is got rid of by the liver and everything else, but the kidney does most of it, and we get rid of that. And what then tends to happen is if the kidneys are not efficient, I must say, you gradually accumulate this waste. and that makes you tired. That affects your brain because it's, it's in the blood, it's circulating everywhere. And you tend to have like a brain fog. And sometimes actually, because it gradually, gradually goes up, you just adapt. And you don't realize that you're carrying a lot of waste. You just go on with your life and all, but you find you do less and less and less. If you feel like that, go to your GP. I always tell people, I had a patient who was a GP. He said to me, If a patient comes to me from now on back and says, doctor, I feel tired. He said, one of the investigations I'm going to do is I'm going to check their kidney because they do feel tired. That's how he felt at the beginning of his condition. So yes, if you feel tired for no particular reason, I would go take myself to the doctors and say to them, I think something is wrong with me. And is it my kidneys? And especially if there's family history, if you are diabetic, if you are hypertensive, just go in there and just check it. Number five, poor appetite. Now, this might be one that somebody wouldn't actually want to get checked out because say if you want to lose a bit of weight and you're not feeling hungry, you're like, hey, here's a gift. 
Yes. Poor oh. appetite. That's not a bad thing, but actually it can be a sign of a bad thing. So why does your appetite reduce if you have kidney disease? Yeah, I'm actually going to say I put two very good examples of what you've just been talking about. So, oh, this is a bonus. I'm going to lose weight now. One of <laughs> one of the ladies said to me, Pat, I was the biggest loser at Slimming World. And um, I was very happy. But then I suddenly found I was still losing weight without doing anything. Yes, with the kidneys, what happens? It affects your appetite. People behave what they describe to me as like a metallic taste in their mouth. I remember a lady said, Pat, my mouth was tasting like a toilet bowl all the time. I said, no, you can't say that. But she said, because she smelled urea, she smelled like urine and her taste was bad. She said, it just smelled like a toilet bowl. And I'm thinking, no, you can't say that. But kidney disease is associated with poor appetite because I think the body is trying to preserve itself from the person getting more waste into the body and you not being able to get rid of it. So you don't eat. And if the urea levels are going higher, they tend to affect the appetite because then you have that metallic taste in your mouth which stops you eating. Number five, mm. nausea. And again, it almost ties in with poor appetite. You're feeling nauseated. Again, with the high urea levels, with the high waste. The nausea is associated again with the higher urea levels, which affect the appetite, which also affected what the patient ate on the day. So it's part of the kidney disease again. So again, nausea, mm -hmm. not something to ignore. No. Number seven, needing to wee more often. Now, this might be something that really surprises people because I'm sure most people would think that if your kidneys are starting to fail, you would wee less, not wee more. So why would you need to wee more often? The kidney goes through stages. It goes through a stage where it doesn't really know what to do with it. Then you pee a lot and it does not always remember when to stop. But sometimes when you look at that pee, it hasn't got enough waste in there but you're just peeing. If you don't drink enough, you get dehydrated. So there's a stage that the kidney goes through where it just pees a lot. But as time goes on, then you find it doesn't cope with that either. And sometimes what the kidney does, it makes you pee at night as well. So if you are finding that you are peeing at night more than you did before, then I would have the kidney checked. If it's a man, then it's different. It could be the prostate as well. If it's an older man of about 50 years old, it could be the prostate as well, which is affecting them. But if you start peeing overnight in the day and sometimes get even get dehydrated with it, or if you are on water tablets and you start peeing in the night, are you taking the water tablet at the right time? Because it should be in the morning and at lunchtime rather than in the evening, so that you don't go to the toilet to pee. Are you all right? If it's like that, go to your GP. Go and be checked out. What's going on? What is going on? Because you shouldn't normally pee at night because we have got a hormone which comes up, the antidiuretic hormone, which is produced overnight, more overnight, the one that stops us from peeing so that we can sleep. So is that mechanism going on in the background? So why is it being defeated? Yeah. Right. I think it's also interesting what you said about you pee more and there's no waste in it because prior mm. to my diagnosis, I was the one in the office that while everyone was drinking tea and coffee, I would drink water. And it got to the stage when I would go to the toilet. Here we are oversharing, but hope this helps somebody by oversharing. But when I would go to the toilet, my urine was completely clear like water. And I thought, oh, this means I'm I, you know, I'm doing really well. Like I've, I've drank so much water that, you know, that I'm keeping myself healthy. But actually, it was a sign that my kidneys were in trouble because it showed that they weren't filtering anything. And that's mm -hmm. why my urine was completely clear. So, yes, guys, again, every single one of these points, if you get any of them, you know, needing to wean more often, don't ignore it. Get it checked out. And don't forget D. When you get to that point 
where the kidney is not filtering too much. It shows you because then you start having swollen eyes. So the kidney will always tell, there will always be a sign. You are dehydrated now. Everything is dry. You are, your skin is dry and itchy and all. But suddenly you start swelling. It means that kidney actually has gone past that stage where it was. It's now at a retaining stage and you need to manage that too. So you've made reference to the next one, number eight, which is dry, itchy skin. Now, this is one that people, again, wouldn't necessarily associate with kidney disease. If you have dry, itchy skin, you probably think that you have eczema or you have psoriasis or some other skin condition. You wouldn't think, oh, yeah, my skin's dry and itchy. My kidneys are in trouble. So, yeah, this one, definitely. Why do you get dry, itchy skin if you have kidney disease? You know, if you look at the kidney, actually, sometimes you think it works by itself. No, there's always another system that helps to do, you know, like if that fails, if somebody else tries to do it for the other system, the skin, believe it or not, tries to get rid of waste when the kidney is not getting rid of waste. It tries to get really? it out. Yes, tries to get out, urea out, tries to get all the excess out. And then, unfortunately, it comes on the skin and it itches you and you are scratching all the time, you know. This is why we advise people to sort of use some creams and things like that. Because the skin tries its best. Sometimes when you are too acidic, which the kidney does as well, you've got the lungs trying to get rid of stuff as well. So there's always like another system which is trying to help. So the skin is trying to help. you. Like if you are going through a time when your kidney is draining so much out, it means you end up with a lot of waste in your body and the skin tries to get rid of it as well so that you feel well and it doesn't do a good job of it. And unfortunately, then you start itching and, and that happens. The skin is an excretory. It excretes some stuff as well, an organ, which helps the body to get rid of stuff. Like, for example, when it's hot, the skin gets rid of your water, doesn't it? You sweat like whatever. So it tries to do that as well, to get rid of all the waste. So that's what is happening. So, yes, dry, itchy skin. If it's a continuous thing, yeah. do get it checked yeah. out. Yeah, it is good. Number nine, muscle uh-huh. cramps. Now, this might be one, especially for people who are very active and they get mm. muscle cramps. Athletes, any type of really yes. active person, cramping is something that a lot of people experience. So why do you get muscle cramps if you have kidney disease? If you have kidney disease, because the kidney is responsible for making sure that your souls are in harmony with each other in the body, it's responsible for keeping your pH balance in your body. So what tends to happen is there is a tendency to becoming acidotic when you've got kidney disease. What is acidotic? Acidotic is when you become too acid rather than alkaline. It's almost like, you know, if you've got an allotment and you're checking your sand for alkalinity and whether it's acid or alkaline, the body is like that too. But the body is just bang in between. It's not there, it's not there. So what tends to happen is the body needs to be a bit in between. It shouldn't be acid, it shouldn't be alkaline. And what tends to happen is when those sorts are not in balance, the body has to show you somehow. And having cramps is one. And sometimes actually, it then starts affecting you because they tend to happen at night in a lot of the patients I've talked to. And they can't sleep at night. There's always some medication to try and help that. So somebody should go and be checked out. Why would you be having cramps sleeping? If you did not have them before, you are not an athlete like you're saying, why are you having them? So I would go and be checked out because it actually shows that something is wrong with the balance of the salts in your body and why then they'll find out why and they can give you medication or they can investigate you more to find out to get to the bottom of that so it's very important to be checked out and this actually while we are there it it tends to cause sleepless nights then because you are in pain overnight and sometimes with some people they have like restless legs as well very very earlier on legs which just are shaking for no particular reason as well that actually could also be picked up and be sorted out as well. It could be some sores which need sorting out. The kidney will show itself 
differently in different people. I remember when one of these girls who said, I just used to swell my, my fingers. I did not know why I went to my GP and I went again and again I, until we went to the bottom of it and found that she had kidney disease. So what comes up in one person is not what comes up in the next person. With somebody, it just could be muscle cramps and not sleeping all night or whatever, or not sleeping at all because of pain with the cramps and things like that. Why is it happening? It shouldn't happen. If something happens, which shouldn't be happening, why is this happening? It's stopping me from doing whatever you normally do. Go and be checked. There's no harm in going to be checked and making sure that somebody investigates it and finds out what's wrong. So yes, muscle cramps, especially if they're happening at night, get them checked out. Don't ignore it. And finally, number 10, and this is something I can definitely relate to personally and something that you've made reference to, and that is sleep problems. Now, why does having kidney disease affect your sleep? I don't think the answer itself is known, D. Because if I think if anybody knew the answer, they would help everybody because that is a very, very common problem. Some patients go for a week without sleeping properly. And you think, how can, how does somebody do that? But what I have seen over the years is some consultants would start someone on like a, a course of sleeping tablet and reverse it all. Sometimes what I found is because the person is at home, they are tired. They've got no appetite. They are not eating. They are feeling nauseated. Everything. They can't walk their mobilities. They have naps in the day. They have a lot of naps in the day. Come night time, they can't sleep. Wide awake. Yes. So that's one big problem because a lot of those people who have said to me, oh, but I can't sleep. And I think you tell me from the, when you wake up, what do you do? Sometimes they think they are watching East Enders or something, but they are asleep. <laughs> they, they can't concentrate. They fall asleep. And they don't always say, oh, I was asleep. They say I was watching telly. So I'm saying, so did you watch the telly and go through the day? You find actually, there are so many naps in that day that take away the big sleep in the night. So this is why some, one of my consultants actually just used to put somebody on a cost, a small cost of sleeping tablets to try and reverse it back and then take them off and then they'll be fine. It's just remembering to keep oneself busy in the day so that you can sleep in the night. If you are unwell, that's different. But try to keep yourself busy because there is so much that will keep you in the city. A lot of the symptoms will keep you in the city if you're not careful. And also with some people, because they're in the city all the time, they gain weight by not exercising. And you start having sleeping problems, sleep apnea and things like that. And you don't sleep in the night because you are too scared, you know. So there's so many different little things which can be addressed differently. So exercise will do. And also trying to have some objective in the day to do to keep yourself awake and keep yourself still communicating with others so that you don't sleep in the day. So and the tiredness, I mean, you can't take away because it's just gradually going up. You can't take away that. If you make such your day such that you've got things to do, it's better than just sitting there. So I guess this is where sleep hygiene would come in, you know, having that routine. And there is actually yes. an episode on sleep hygiene on the podcast. So do check out the sleep hygiene episode. Oh, good. So good. it's really important then that when you take your medication, if you are on water tablets, make sure you take them in the morning yeah. so that it doesn't impact on your sleep. There's mm -hmm. practical things that you can do to help with that. But obviously, there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily in your control. But just being aware of what you can do to help manage it. And also, Dee, if you are started on the tablets for restless legs, taking them. If you are started on tablets for your cramps, taking them. And like I say, the sleeping tablets, taking them, it's almost like working together with whoever is managing you or going to tell the person, being honest with the person, say, you know what, I can't sleep. I don't know what's happening to me. If you are not diagnosed yet, send somebody can start investigating you and find out why. I think we keep it to ourselves for a long, long, long time. Like I always say, Dee, 
kidneys don't shrink. If they are there, they just throw you a, a few of these things once in a while, you know, hoping that you get to know that there's something really happening. If you don't take note of them and act on them, then unfortunately it will just go on behind the scenes without you knowing. So we've looked at the 10 signs that you may have kidney disease, blood in your wee or urine, puffy eyes, ankles and feet, foamy wee, tiredness and brain fog, poor appetite, nausea, needing to wee more often, dry itchy skin, muscle cramps and sleep problems. And as you said, Auntie Pat, a person could have one or more combination of these different symptoms. So if you have any of these, all of these, some of these, it is really important to get them checked out. So in closing, what final piece of advice and encouragement do you have for the listeners? I would like to say to everybody, like I say today all the time, Kidneys don't shout, but kidney disease is common. And I think if you've got a family history of kidney disease, if you've got diabetes, if you've got high blood pressure, and you have some of these little things, they don't come together. They don't come all the time. Sometimes they just sneak in and come out. All these symptoms that we've just been discussing. Go to someone and say, what's going on with me? I'm worried because there is family history of this. I've got diabetes and I'm having this. How are my kidneys? How is my kidney health? So look after yourselves and look after your kidneys. Thank you so much, Auntie Pat, for joining me today and for sharing this information. This information is so important because these are things that can easily be written off and ignored by people. And so it is so important to raise awareness of these because, you know, I always say that this information could potentially save a life. And the reality is that life could be your own. So it's really important that we get this word out there, that people know what to look for when they experience these signs and symptoms. Don't ignore it. Get it checked out and do share this podcast with a friend, with a loved one, so that they can know how to take care of themselves and protect themselves too. So thank you again so much, Auntie Pat, for all that you've shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. And don't forget that you can contact me on social media using the handle Diary of a Kidney Warrior. Please do subscribe to the podcast and please do tell a friend. New episodes of this podcast are released every other Monday. Until next time, take care and choose to live. Diary of a Kitty Warrior. Sharing faith, knowledge, hope and love.